Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Review Den. And welcome to one of the big ones, one of my personal favorites, the game that spun Forza Motorsport off into an open-world behemoth so big it eclipsed the series it started from. But while the Horizon games are very popular, the first title tends to be overlooked by most players. And that's a shame, because while the later games are, okay, probably better objectively, they have the same great gameplay and presentation with loads more content, there's just something more, I don't know, edgy, personal about the first one. The later games live up to the studio's name by being, well, a playground for racers. Go to a beautiful location, race and collect tons of cars, and goof off in multiplayer. There you go. But the first game? Well, it made you work for that glory. Yes, Horizon 1 includes an honest-to-goodness story to drive you forward. And while most players are perfectly happy with the simple checklist to complete, no matter how goofy they are, I have always loved a story mode in racers. From Toka 2 to Most Wanted, heck, even our racing evolution, but don't tell anyone. Now, story doesn't take the place of good racing, but there's no worries there as Playground pretty much nailed everything on the first try. Love it or hate it, Microsoft's habit of buying the talent they needed paid off in spades here as the developers were a veritable who's who of veterans from the best racers of the time. Colin McRae Rally, Grid, Project Gotham, Burnout, Playground Games brought the team together, and the result was awesome. So join me in taking a look at it. After a short FMV of partygoers and tuner bros to set the mood, you're given a high-speed early morning welcome to the beautiful U.S. state of Colorado. You'll get a short chance to learn the controls at the wheel of a brand new third-gen Viper before getting a glimpse of lead rival and apparent reigning champion of the festival, Darius Flint. Enjoy the horsepower while it lasts, as win or lose, you'll soon switch perspectives to the real protagonist and our avatar hanging at a car meet. Now, all the scripting and cutscenes may be common for gamers today, but for fans of Forza up to this point, the characters, story bits, and DJ dialogue were all brand new, and it's a credit to Playground just how polished and exciting they got it on the first try. The call comes in for the last group of entries, so off you go for the next leg of the intro. That VR6 Corrado is fast, but it's not fast enough and you are rapidly losing chances to even enter the festival. Yeah, this game really puts you behind the eight ball. The intro isn't some grand entrance to show off wingsuits and flying motorcycles. You really are the underdog here, and those Corvettes, Gallardos, and Porsches are quickly gobbling up all the tickets. You eventually manage to slide in just under the wire, though, and are introduced to the main hub. Hey, that's a male gaze! They don't allow that anymore! And again, credit to the devs for truly making this look and feel like an actual festival. Most open world racers put points of interest as dots on a map, but Horizon drives home <laughs> that this is supposed to be a believable event, with midways, massive tents, music stages, light shows, and entire fields of partygoers. You'll also be introduced to the game loop. The festival is made up of seven levels, or wristbands, each with its own set of races and each guarded by a champion or rival. There's former pros, rich kids, hipsters, and jackass ripoffs, and each one will taunt or call you out before their races. The later Horizons have plenty of dialogue with invisible race organizers, but here your rivals appear in the game and they want to keep you down. I can't I enjoy humiliating upstarts like yourself. Complete races to earn points towards the next wristband, at which point the next set of events unlocks, and the current rival will challenge you to a one-on-one, -on -one, with pink slips on the line. For the racing itself, Horizon benefits from being based on Forza Motorsport, which had matured rapidly during the seventh generation. Forza had grown from a crude remake of the original to a polished Gran Turismo competitor with high fidelity physics, and you feel that payoff here. Now, the physics are made more forgiving in favor of easy drifts and third-person play, but it's a smooth, predictable engine, and most of all, it's just fun. Cockpit players should find a decent challenge on simulation, and elements like tire deformation survived the crossover, but you don't need a spreadsheet to know it just feels right. 
It's pure Simcade fun with weight, power, and drivetrain responding the way they should. Played on normal from third person with all the assists off, I have some of the most fun of all the Forza series right here. Collisions with barriers and opponents are more forgiving than the mainline series, which is probably good considering how tight the racing is, and all the usual rewinds and difficulty settings are available. The only place where things go haywire is when you go airborne, which seems to be an arrow in the knee of many Simcade games, but overall the racing is the perfect balance of low-key sim and action. In between races, you're free to explore the game map. Horizon's depiction of Colorado doesn't strive for the size or accuracy of, say, the road system in Test Drive Unlimited. Think of it as a postcard of the coolest bits of the state, or the American Midwest. Some highlights, like the Argo Gold Mine and Red Rock Amphitheater, do make appearances, although most of the names are fictionalized. In addition to races, there are outposts scattered throughout the map, which let you swap out, tune, or paint your cars. Each outpost has three PR stunts for you to accomplish, and completing these gives you free fast travel to that outpost, in addition to letting you try out some of the top-end cars. Discount signs are dotted throughout the map, each giving a 1% discount on parts and upgrades. Smash all 100 and you can modify your rides totally free. You can challenge roaming competitors to an instant race, and every drift, near-miss, sideswipe, or high-speed stunt adds to your sponsor challenges for additional cash. Kudos! Hey, I get that reference! In terms of content, Horizon provides a good 7-10 to 10 hour experience and over 150 cars before DLC. Multiplayer is now off the table, but races remain on the map for replayability, so completionists have plenty to chew on, but this really is one of the more compact Forza experiences. The later games are pretty much ongoing collectathons where you'll want to keep your main save through the years, but Horizon 1 is more like a good need for speed, like Most Wanted, where starting a new story every once in a while is the best way to experience it. Try a new supercar in the end game, maybe up the difficulty. The fun here is playing through the game, taking down the rivals, not so much completing a checklist. The races themselves are lap-based or point-to-point, -point, but they're curated to show off the best parts of the map, and most will be themed to certain cars or types. Time of day and even music are hard-coded to each race, so muscle events will enjoy hard drive and rock, while 80 supercars get electronica or synth. After gaining a few levels, you'll unlock the Underground League, where you won't earn progress toward wristbands, but the cash payouts are much higher. These are treated as unsanctioned races in that you'll have to contend with traffic, and race routes aren't walled off. You'll only get checkpoint spotlights like Midnight Club. While there's no police to worry about, I always enjoyed the nod to real-life street racing here, something they kind of sanitized in later games. And you'll get your first taste of showcase events. You'll face off against aircraft such as helicopters, hot air balloons, biplanes, or the cleverly named Mustang vs. Mustang. Highly scripted or not, these are fun and exciting events that really helped Horizon stand out from the competition. This isn't just a stodgy racing game on public roads, this is a festival with all the zaniness you'd expect. The car list is great as well. This is street racing, so dedicated race cars are out, but you'll get a best of selection of European sport, American muscle, and Japanese tuners, all from modern to classics. There's over 150 cars out of the box and about 200 with DLC, and while this pales compared to later Horizons, there's still a great variety. And unlike the later games where most of the cars they throw at you, you'll use maybe once or not at all, here you're encouraged to choose rides you can stick with. You'll get enough prize money to swap out every few races, but mostly you'll want to modify your favorites for multiple events. It's a rare case of a survey sim getting the economy just right. You have to work your way through the story, but by endgame you'll unlock big payout events which let you fill in your garage. Prize cars are given in showcase events, rival one-on-ones, underground leagues, and the occasional barn finds, which in a nice touch includes the classic Le Mans cars which were some of the most expensive in previous Forzas, so if you missed out on them then, you could use them here. Oh, and just as a heads up for newbies, there's only one Class R1 race here, so you might want to take an upgraded R2 just so you don't waste millions on a single-use car. The paint shop is included for making and selling designs, and you can upgrade and modify your cars same as the mainline games, although you can't tune them, which is a glaring omission. 
And now for one of the best parts, the presentation. Horizon 1 is a crazy good looking and sounding game. Playground Games pulled out all the stops on the 360. Later games would add rotating seasons, and they look good, but here they fully committed to a colorful fall palette, and it looks beautiful. Yellow, green, and auburn foliage fill the screen while sunrises and sunsets bathe the world in color. The Rocky Mountains tower in the east, while desert highways demonstrate draw distances in the west. Even nighttime looks cool with a moonlit glow covering everything. But it isn't just the environments that look great. All the pageantry and event areas are brimming with life. Trailers and sound stages are set up next to each venue, while race marshals and competitors walk the pre-race grid. Sure, the later games have crowds along the sides, but everything just seems more lifelike and personal here. Viewed in 4K on an X or series system, this game still compares well to newer titles and shows that good art design can outlast technical limitations. The one price you'll pay for all of this is a 30 FPS experience, down from 60, but the smooth physics help keep everything playable. Car models are mostly great too. There's a few holdovers from older Forzas that need updating or better damage modeling, but mostly the lineup is slick, inside and out. equally impressive to the visuals is the sound. Horizon benefits from some updated engine notes, and while it might have been absent from a few games, this is back when adding a race exhaust really punches up the volume. Engines and turbos really shine through here. Yet even this is outdone by the soundtrack. Horizon was marketed as a celebration of speed and music, and this is one of the most energetic and memorable racing soundtracks, right up there with Hot Pursuit. Playground called in British DJ Rob Gorham, or Rob Da Bank, to curate the song list, and man, he did a great job. Horizon's radio stations keep the tempo of the game high, while DJs sound believable and update you with background events in the festival. So what about downloadable content? Well, Forza has always stayed relevant and timely by adding new goodies, and Horizon is no different. Several car packs were added in the months after launch, bringing the car total to over 200, including promotionals and unicorns, but it was the gameplay add-ons that really shined. If Horizon brought the series off the track, Horizon Rally brought it off the road. Colorado had a few dirt sections where all-wheel drives and SUVs shined, but Rally is a dedicated off-road point-to-point experience. And yes, these are all point-to-point. -point. There's no open-world map here, but the trade-off is longer races. Each rally consists of four heats, with the lowest final time determining the winner. Courses consist of sweeping turns, jumps, hazards, and hairpins, with power slides the order of the day. Five popular WRC cars are added to the roster along with the appropriate bodywork, and rally tires, shocks, and transmissions are added as upgrades, meaning any car in the game can be used here. The courses all look great, same as the base game, and while off-roading was later integrated into the main maps of later games, it's kind of cool to see how it started off as its own unique mode back in Horizon 1. And lastly, the 1000 Club was added as free DLC for all players. Two final cars were added to the roster, always nice, but more notably challenge coins were added to every car in the game, around five each for the titular 1000. Completing these challenges added more achievements to your profile and gave players a fun reason to try some of the cars they missed. Uh, I miss the 360, back when you could actually keep track of how many games there were and their achievements. Put all of this together and Horizon 1 was an awesome and trend-setting game. You can definitely see how most of the fundamentals in later games were introduced right here, a credit to the developers, but strangely it's some of the elements left behind that make this, I don't know, the standout of the series. Horizons 2 through 5 are great for racing tons of cars through beautiful environments, but Horizon 1 has that extra bit of personality and excitement, the personal competition. It doesn't hurt that it looks, sounds, and plays as awesomely as it does either. But what do you think? Is it content that's king? Am I crazy? Feel free to comment down below, and as always, thank you so much for watching. You guys are all awesome, I'll be back with another video, and no matter what, be sure to keep going, because you are worth it.